Hi, everybody. My name is Emmanuel Lamacus. I'm a director of programs at the College Art Association. And uh, we've assembled a nice crew of people here to review the CAA annual conference. We're going to begin by giving an overview. And then we're going to open it up to uh, questions. If you would like to submit a question, and we want to encourage you to do so, you may do so on Twitter using the hashtag CAA Conference Q on Google Plus events page and by email to conferenceqs at collegeart.org. Joining me uh, today are to my left <laughs> Lauren Stark, who works with, at, with me here at the College Art Association. Uh, her principal responsibilities include the annual conference, and she knows just about everything there is to know about the annual conference. And she's there on site with me and others uh, from CAA to make sure it all runs uh, smoothly. Uh, in addition, let me introduce the other uh, participants, beginning with Jacqueline Francis, who is an art historian and a professor at the California College of the Arts. Uh, Jackie is also on the board of directors and uh, serves in the capacity of vice president for the annual conference. Uh, this means she's directly related to her, her uh, I should say that her responsibilities are directly related to the annual conference. In addition, she chairs the annual conference committee and this is the committee that chooses from session proposals the uh, program for the annual conference. Uh, Jackie Francis is joining us. In Hello. addition, Laurel Peterson uh, is a doctoral candidate in art history at Yale University. She uh, is a member of the Student and Emerging Professionals Committee, CAA. And she is representing, you might say, that constituency in today's uh, Google uh, Hangout. In addition, um, uh, Laurel was also employed by CAA for a few years. And uh, we're happy that uh, she's familiar with the conference, the staff uh, responsibilities, as well as the Student and Emerging Professionals Committee. Joining us also is uh, Paul Jascott, who is a professor of art history and archaeology at Duquesne University. Art, art and excuse, art history and architecture. Okay, I've been corrected by Professor Jascott. <laughs> it is professor of art and history and architecture at uh, DePaul University in Chicago. Uh, that's going to resonate in our talk uh, today because the next conference is actually taking place uh, in Chicago. Uh, Paul was on the board of directors and its president from 2008 to 2010. And we welcome Paul to this conversation as well. Uh, Brian Bishop is joining us uh, today as well. He is an associate professor of art and chair of the Department of Art and Music at Framingham State University in Massachusetts. Um, Brian is about as knowledgeable as anyone can possibly be about art space, which is one of the main components of the annual conference. Uh, art space is actually programmed by the uh, Services to Artists uh, Committee. And uh, he was on that committee for a whopping seven years and served as its chair for three of those years. So he will give us uh, a lot of insights into the art space uh, programming. Now I'm going to say a few things uh, broadly about the uh, annual conference. Uh, it's been around for a very, very long time. The conference in Chicago will be the 107nd second, excuse me, annual conference. CAA goes back just a few years before that to 
1911 when it was formed as a professional organization for teachers of art and art history. Don't the, shut us now, Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show the snow slide. <laughs> Sorry. It'll um, all be gone by the time we get there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the uh, conference rotates nowadays, uh, although it's been around for many years and has been held in all kinds of locations throughout the United States. It currently rotates between and among three cities. It's held in New York City every other year uh, and in Chicago and Los Angeles every fourth, every four years, I should say. There is one exception to this little pattern, and that pattern uh, will involve, uh, will be interrupted, I should say, by a trip to Washington, D.C. in 2016. As I said, the next conference, the 100th and 2nd conference, is being held uh, in Chicago, which uh, is a terrific location for a conference because of all the many uh, universities, museums, and cultural attractions that Chicago uh, has to uh, offer. It's going to be held at the Hilton Chicago, which is on South Michigan uh, Avenue. And uh, one of the great things about that location is that it allows us to uh, program the whole conference in basically one setting. In addition to that, it is also close to a number of cultural institutions, uh, most notably the Art Institute of Chicago, Chicago's great, 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 great museum, and the School of the Art Institute of Chicago which is one of the main educational institutions uh, in the city. If you haven't registered for the conference yet, you should do so, but I must tell you the advanced uh, and early registration periods are over, so if you want to register, you have to register on site, and that uh, registration area is located uh, at the Hilton in Chicago on the lower level. If you have already registered and if you want to register, you go to the registration area, uh, pick up your badge, and a nice little tote that's full of all kinds of wonderful uh, things. Uh, and Lauren is going to actually display this gorgeous thing. Here's one side and there's the other side. And it will be filled with a uh, program, the official program for the annual conference. Um, a lot of other uh, good things, uh, including a, um, what else will be in it, I guess? Sessions uh, at a glance. Sessions at a glance, and uh, which Lauren is holding up now. Uh, in addition to all kinds of goodies that will lead you to discounts and other uh, amenities. Uh, in uh, the city of Chicago. So um, uh, if you haven't, I want to encourage you to register for the conference and uh, keep one thing in mind. If you are a member of CAA, uh, you get a great discount over your on your conference registration. So please join CAA uh, too in addition to registering for the conference. I'd like to uh, introduce Lauren and ask her to discuss the conference website and app. Hi, everybody. Um, there are a number of ways to learn about the conference. Um, the first is the conference website, which includes a searchable, filterable list of sessions. Uh, you can filter by such things as day, time, location, um, and in, within the sessions itself, you can do a keyword search, you can search by a speaker's name, um, paper title, etc. Um, we also have something new this year. It's the free conference app that you can download. Um, and the app, with the app, you can search sessions and events. You can create your own personalized schedule. You can browse the book and trade fair exhibitors. Um, and you can share events on social media. 
<clears throat> we also encourage you to follow CAA on social media, such as Facebook and Twitter. And we will be live tweeting at the conference, and we invite you to join us in the conversation with the hashtag CAA2014. Um, last but not least, uh, we do have a YouTube channel, and currently on it is last year's Distinguished Artist Interviews with Lean Antoni and Mira Shore. So be sure to check that out. Thanks, Lauren. Um, I wanted to give you just a quick overview of the types of programming we have uh, at the annual conference. Um, I oftentimes describe this as a three-ring surface because there are three main components. Um, one of the first, the first I should say, is the content portion which includes the program of sessions. There are approximately 120 of these sessions. These are the ones that are selected by the annual conference committee. Uh, they run for two and a half hours and they allow uh, art historians, visual artists, curators, and others to present on topics of the day and uh, historical subjects as well. Uh, the uh, other one uh, is the uh, career services component and uh, I'll speak more in detail about that but this is the component that uh, serves you uh, by providing mentoring, uh, interviewing opportunities and uh, other such uh, avenues that help you advance your profession. Finally, there is the book and trade fair. Uh, this is a uh, special portion of the conference which allows uh, publishers of art books and uh, also uh, manufacturers of art supplies to display their uh, products and services and it's a very very important uh, component uh, needless to say of the annual conference. In addition to this there are many 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 other events that are going on at the same time. Meetings and receptions uh, sponsored by our affiliated societies and other allied organizations and uh, as you will hear shortly there are a number of receptions. The chief one being on Wednesday evening taking place at the uh, Art Institute of Chicago. Now let me introduce, uh, or I should say reintroduce Paul Jascott who will uh, highlight the selections of the uh, special events. Uh, thanks Emmanuel. Uh, I'm really very excited as usual to welcome everybody back to Chicago. It's always a great uh, great time and um, we'll try to make it well worth your while here. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of exciting programs. I remember one thing I used to do as, uh, as president, one of the great uh, things that I got to do was to introduce the award givers and the keynote speaker and really it's 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 quite an honor uh, given the, the kind of names that come across that uh, podium on that night. Um, so just so you know, uh, certainly the keynote address will be given by the visual artist Jessica Stockholder and I'm very excited to see what she says about her work. I would also say it's part of our uh, strategic plan that was uh, about highlighting artists and we've had quite a few artists now who've been given, given the keynote so I think that's going to be a really exciting opportunity. Um, that'll be on um, a Wednesday night, correct? Convocation? Yes. <laughs> That's what I thought. Um, and then also there are the CA Awards for Distinctions, which are really great, um, including the Distinguished Artist uh, Award for Lifetime Achievement, the Charles Rufus Morey Book Award, and the Frank Jewett Mather Award, uh, among others. Um, the um, opening night reception will be at the Art Institute. Uh, they always put on quite a glamorous show. There you see it in the new modern wing. Uh, that's really a, a great space, um, and we really, they really have gone all out for CAA, so it's, we're really appreciative of that, but please do try to get a ticket. Those are going fast, so I hear. Um, and then we also have, uh, on Friday usually, I think that's right, the annual Distinguished Artist Interview, and this year, uh, two great artists, Kay Rosen and William Pope L. Uh, very, very uh, diverse uh, and interesting approaches to art, and very much looking forward to what they have to say. And I'm thrilled to hear that last year's are on the website. That's good. I didn't know that. Or the YouTube channel, excuse me. So looking forward to looking at that myself. 
And then finally is on Thursday, we have the Distinguished Scholar Session, 13th Annual, and that'll be the very prominent Americanist, Wanda Korn, who's done quite a bit for our field of our history. So very, very excited about seeing that too. Um, now you might say, you know, of those of us that have been at this for a billion years, uh, how do you work your way through the session if you're new to CAA? Well, you know, I, I don't think there's any perfect method. I'm very excited about the app. Thank you, Lauren. I'm definitely going to make use of that. Um, but it's also, I think that, you know, there's the usual, you can uh, session hop, go from session to session, try to guess the 20 minute break. Um, or, I, you know, actually more recently, I've tried to kind of sit in on a whole session just to see the big picture. But, you know, I think we've both done it, or we've all done it in different ways. Uh, but either way, however you find your way around it, uh, try to find what's manageable and uh, focus in on a few sessions that you really think will be uh, most interesting to you. So I say have a lot of fun. Thank you, Paul. Um, one of the things that makes uh, CAA very special as an organization is that it serves two great constituencies, people who study the history of art and people who make art. Uh, visual artists are a very important part of our membership, and they contribute to the annual conference uh, very, very significantly. I'd like to uh, turn the conversation over to Brian, uh, who will discuss Art Space, the very special programming for artists, in addition to giving you an artist's perspective on attending the annual conference. OK, thank you. Um, it's important to note that um, Art Space is now in its 13th year. It was started by the Services to Artists Committee, one of the many um, hip committees that are run by CAA. Um, it is a conference within the conference. Um, it is free and open to the public. Um, it has a myriad of different programmings that go on throughout the day. And these will be typical sessions, and they will also then go into um, specialized programs that happen outside of the normal kind of nine to five day of the conference. Um, it is important to understand that art space is free and open to the public, so anyone can come in. Uh, there is always special Saturday programming. Um, that tries to engage a lot of the community outside of the people that come to the conference. So students, anyone, should definitely come to Art Space. Uh, each morning we'll begin with coffee, tea, and juice. That's complimentary. Uh, it's a way of kind of milling around and kind of getting to know people and networking in an informal way. Uh, and we want you to know, we want you to share your Art Space experience because it is one of the more positive aspects of the conference for an artist. So while you're there, you can use any social media platform you want, um, but if you use Twitter, uh, to go in and either use the hashtag ArtSpace or put them together and use ArtSpace and CAA 2014, which is up there. Um, two of the other special events that ArtSpace and the Services Artists Committee are involved with is uh, one is called Art Exchange, and that is an open forum for CAA members to share their work with the members and the attendees of the annual conference. Um, each participant gets a six-foot table on which they can showcase their work. They're allowed to show anything from painting to photography to print. We've had people do performances on top and underneath tables. Um, it's really kind of an, a, a very kind of dynamic evening. Um, and so that's something you should look for. It's on Friday evening, I imagine, right? Yes. Usually it's okay. Um, another really important aspect and kind of mission uh, the Service Artists Committee has been working on for the last, you know, 10 years within the Media Lounge. Um, and this is a way that we can show new media programming during the conference, something that's time-based, it's very difficult to see, like, let's say, at a table. Um, this year, there are two curated projects. Uh, the first one's called Uncommon Commons, um, and it responds to themes of commons and commoning through a series of films and video screenings, workshops, public discussions, and provocations by a range of international artists, filmmakers, activists, art critics, curators, community researchers, educa educators, attorneys, and ethnographers. How about that? We need to cover everyone. <laughs> um, the other one would be uh, Art to Make, which is going to be a special exhibition of sculptural objects presented as digital files that may be printed using a 3D printer. Um, there will be a 3D printer on site at the conference demonstrating how it works. Uh, there will be a special catalog for art to make, which functions as a visual index of the artworks uh, and provides links to the digital files to allow anyone to print and own their own sculptures. Um, you can download the catalog in the, um, at conference.collegeart.org slash art to make, and that's to like 
Prince would do it, like the number two. All right. Um, then uh, the last thing I want to say is that one of the things we commonly get asked is, so I'm an artist. I'm at CAA. I don't, I don't want to sit in this panel that deals with 18th century realism. I don't understand why I would be there. And the idea is that there are a lot of things you can gather, not just from the art historical pattern um, sessions and not just from the sessions that are during art space. But there are a lot of other kind of informal networking ideas. There are, of course, the artist interviews, which is another major project that serves to artist committee. Um, and there's, there's a lot there for you, I guess, is the best way to answer the question. Thank you, very, All right. thank you very much, Brian. Um, Brian's theme actually continues into a little thing I want to report on, and that uh, is an overview of uh, CAA's career services. Um, CAA believes in serving its members by mentoring them and providing opportunities for professional development and also more concretely opportunities to interview for positions on site. Um, the career services at CAA actually fulfill those three functions. If you are a visual artist and you want to have your portfolio reviewed, we have a portfolio review mentoring area. If you want to have your resume reviewed, if you are an artist or an art historian, you can come to the career services area and have those reviewed. The people who do the reviewing are senior individuals in the fields and uh, they can offer you very, very concrete information and uh, assessments of portfolios and resumes. Um, if you're looking for a job, uh, there is a center where uh, candidates can come to be interviewed or to seek a position and try to get an interview right there on the spot. Uh, finally, there are a number of professional development uh, workshops uh, that are available to people. I'm not sure they're all filled yet. Um, you, have to, you have to register for, for these. So when you come to the conference and go to the registration area, you can find out uh, about the workshops. Um, I want to uh, uh, invite you all to get a more uh, sustained uh, overview of uh, career services at the CAA conference by attending the uh, orientation to our career services, which is held on Tuesday evening uh, at the Hilton Hotel in Chicago. Uh, I will be there to present you with an overview, a little more detailed than the one I just gave you. But we will also have four individuals there, uh, senior professors who will be able to give you their own uh, view of what constitutes a good portfolio, a good resume, and uh, give you tips on uh, the interview uh, process. So I encourage you to come to the Tuesday night orientation to learn about those things. And it is free and open to the public. Yes, orientation. it is indeed. And uh, Tuesday is technically the day before the conference opens. Now it is my great pleasure uh, to introduce Laurel, who will speak to you about the Student and Emerging Professionals Lounge and give tips for first-time attendees. Laurel? Thanks, Emmanuel. Um, I, if you're a student or starting out your career in the first few years of teaching, or if you're a first-time conference attendee, I definitely encourage you to check out the SEP committee's events on the conference website, as they're in much more detail there than I can give you here. But most importantly, the SEP lounge on the fourth floor of the Hilton, room 4K, is a place that you should certainly check out. It's a really unique space at the conference. It's a place where you can meet fellow students, where you can um, meet and ask questions of the members of the Student and Emerging Professionals Committee. You can learn more about CAA, and you can simply take a breather from the hustle and bustle of the conference. We have tables where you can sit. 
you know, bring your computer to check your email, look over conference materials, or just have a quiet conversation with a friend. The lounge is also where we have a, a range of programming um, that is geared to students, and all of our events are free and open to all. We host a series of brown bag lunches, which are workshops that um, have practical applications. They cover things this year, such as application 101, um, and interviewing strategies and techniques and elevator speech. It's a place where you can come and ask questions, um, seek advice, and learn some, um, learn some new skills. We also host um, mock interviews several days over the course of the conference, and people find these really helpful. If you're on the job market now or planning to be on the job market in the next year or two, this can be a great way to get a little bit of practice um, and to learn about uh, and, and to get feedback on your interviewing skills. So um, we have uh, people who have given lots of interviews, give, give a 20 minute interview and then give you 10 minutes of feedback. There are spaces still available and if you search um, mock interviews on the conference website, you can find their registration form uh, which you can download and send in. We also do have some registration on site um, and sometimes have no shows. So if you don't have a chance to register in advance, definitely stop by and we may be able to fit you in. I think one of the great things about the annual conference is the chance to meet people in your field um, with similar or related interests or maybe interests that you didn't even know you had. Um, and the SEP committee hosts a few events that are great places to meet people. We are having a welcome breakfast on Thursday uh, where you can come by and meet members of the committee, often members of the CAA board stop by, and also um, you can meet fellow students and emerging professionals. And you also get some coffee to start your day. So it's a really great, um, great way to begin the conference. And on Friday evening this year, we're having a social night. Uh, it's going to take place from 5.30 to 8.30 at um, a restaurant called Blackie's, which is uh, 755 South Clark Street. And so this will be a very informal, relaxed way of getting to know um, some of your fellow conference attendees. So thinking about the conference, um, it can be exciting, uh, a little overwhelming, lots of people. Um, and so some tips that I would have thinking about uh, coming, if you're coming to the conference for the first time is first of all, give yourself plenty of time to figure out the layout of the hotel, to orient yourself, and just to get a sense of the lay of the land. Um, plan ahead. There's always lots going on, and inevitably you'll have events that are conflicting. Um, so it really helps to look over the conference schedule in advance. Um, I'm really excited about the app. It should be great, um, very helpful. Read through some of the abstracts, and that helps you really plan the sessions that you want to attend. Um, and as Paul was saying, you can always hop from one session to another. Um, a few practical things. Business cards can be great to have. Um, it's a lot easier and faster than a post-it note, which is also uh, works in a pinch. But um, also keep track of your badge. <laughs> It's an expensive thing to lose, so um, you always have that ready, ready to go, because uh, it is important at the conference. Although, um, no matter what the weather is doing in Chicago, it's hard, also really hard to predict the temperature in the hotel. So I would dress in layers because the room temperatures can differ, and um, you don't want to be freezing while you're listening to a great panel. Also, just um, sort of. Take care of yourself, drink water, bring food, um, keep yourself balanced because it's easy to get wrapped up in everything that's going on. Um, so, and take breaks, that's a really important part. Um, get coffee outside the hotel, take a quick walk, and it will help you maintain your, your energy levels throughout the conference. So, but most importantly, um, enjoy it, have fun. It's a, uh, it can be a great thing. Thanks, Laurel. That was absolutely great. Um, I want to uh, turn it over to Paul to uh, discuss networking with you. Obviously, the annual conference has tons and tons of uh, events going on. 
but there's this more informal way of uh, experiencing and benefiting from the conference. Paul? He's oh, muted. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I think I was muted because I was tweeting while we were you know, telling you about the great thing going on as we were going. Hang on, you all. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, I get silenced a lot. Uh, I actually, I wanted to, uh, before we get there, I wanted to emphasize something Laurel just said, which I also, it took me years to learn, I don't know why I didn't figure this out, uh, but planning a kind of hour or two, sometime in the first day or so, in which you're doing nothing, like really leaving an open block where you can kind of figure out the hotel, figure out where you can grab the quick bite, figuring out where the rooms are, uh, it really is helpful. I, so I totally think that's a great strategy. Uh, I do it now, so it's, uh, I, as I say, it took me a long time to learn it, so thanks, Laurel. Uh, but in terms of, of networking, well, you know, well, we all know how to network. It's all good. It's all easy. We do it all the time. Uh, but I do think at the conference there are some really um, uh, good opportunities that shouldn't be uh, missed. Uh, the first is to say that, in my opinion, you know, networking starts from you. So you've really got to make sure that you're connecting. This is the easy part, right? Connecting with your friends, connecting with your old professors, uh, connecting with your with uh, new colleagues, uh, graduate colleagues, but also people you went to college with. So having a few connections is always a good thing because of course the best way to network is the, the definition of networking you meet people through people so trying to make sure that you have a few key uh, events or a few free key colleagues sprinkled throughout the conference is really a great way of expanding uh, on what you can do um, as Laurel says and I, I couldn't emphasize this more I also bring a stack of, uh, of cards uh, with uh, you know, with all your contact information, uh, you can get them at Kinkos cheaply, or you can also get them from your own institution if you have one. Uh, so definitely do things like that. Uh, but also plan on those downtimes. If if you have a downtime, you need to relax. That's great. But if you're going to lunch, well, try to go to lunch with um, a lot of other people, or go to lunch and strike up a conversation with your neighbor. Uh, Chicago, there are lots of great little restaurants all around the hotel. Uh, of course, you can hang out at the restaurant, uh, hotel for breakfast or the bar. Actually, just hanging around the hotel itself is always a way of, of trying to find like-minded people. And also, it's, I think it's good to kind of think about well, what your goals are. Um, I mean, it's great if you could say, well, my goal is to get that you know, job at Harvard, Yale, and Princeton that I always wanted. Well, that's one goal, uh, but a more realistic goal might be to say, uh, you know, how do we, you know, how do I want to build community, and what communities do I want to build? So I want to go to that session because that's my intellectual community, or I want to go to this affiliated society presentation because I'm interested in this advocacy issue, and you'll really go there and linger at the end and strike up a conversation with someone at the table and see if they're free for coffee. You know, nine times out of ten, we're all free for coffee at some point or another. So I just really encourage you uh, to make use of all those kind of interstices of the conference, uh, those uh, fortuitous meetings over books and the like, uh, to try to uh, make the most and get the most out of this for your social network. And also, uh, just a reminder that CAA itself has, which I didn't know until this Google Hangout, has its own networking page with its tips, uh, which you can see on the annual conference's uh, website. So I highly encourage you to go to that. Uh, it's at uh, Conference College Art 2014 Networking. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so and actually there's a lot of nice tips on there. So I, I think that's a really great advice, whether you're a seasoned networker or whether you're just starting out. So make the most of it. Thank you, Paul. I wanted to just add that uh, one of the great things about holding the conference at a hotel and not a convention center is the relative intimacy that it provides. Uh, that is to say you're always rubbing shoulders with somebody because of the relative scale of the uh, setting. And uh, I want to also encourage all of you to wear your badges and to uh, be alert when you're traveling up and down in the elevators because Elevators are great occasions to start up conversations and to learn about opportunities and to make networking uh, connections. Next, uh, I wanted to invite uh, Jackie Francis to uh, talk to us about the uh, one component, the sessions uh, at the annual conference. Uh, as I said, the annual conference committee, which uh, Jackie chairs, receives 
proposals for sessions and uh, at a very, very long uh, meeting uh, chooses uh, the sessions that are to form the content of the uh, conference. So here is uh, Jackie to discuss that, that process. Thanks, Emmanuel. Hi, everybody. I'm, call I'm uh, glad to be on the call in today because it seems like there's an opportunity, of course, to talk about this session and uh, panel and event proposal. And much of this information, as many of you might know, is already on the CAA website. If you search proposals, you'll come up to uh, a URL that will be collegeart.org slash proposals. And you'll learn a lot about how the proposals for the 2015 session were selected. But as an overview, I'll just say now that proposals are reviewed by a committee um, led by Emmanuel and his staff in New York, and also um, selected members of a committee who are taken from the CAA Board of Directors, um, community uh, members in the local conference region, that is to say for Chicago, they have been Sabina Ott, as well as uh, um, Michelle, um, I'm going to draw a blank. Uh, tell me again, Lauren. Grabner. Grabner. Well, Grabner, right. um, who's a prominent artist in the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. And so these proposals are uh, reviewed uh, by this committee. So the question is uh, here, how to write a good proposal. Well, one thing that CAA uh, does uh, encourage is that uh, people think about the relevance to their particular field, whether they are working artists or art historians or architectural historians. So proposals should somehow take on new research on subjects, whether those subjects are contemporary or historical. Um, the topics should be central to uh, the subject fields. And even more, uh, perhaps revolutionary, think about interdisciplinary opportunities for both research into practices as well as topics. So we're thinking about people um, moving across their subject fields and or their practices to think about methodologies, approaches to uh, work, and approaches to research. Another thing that I'll talk about is in addition to this sort of cross-platform and interdisciplinary session proposals, we like to think about our sessions as opportunities for collaboration. Collaboration among affiliated societies, and th that list will be found at the College Art Association page, and certainly uh, collaborations among colleagues across the fields. Um, the last thing that I'll say in terms of session proposals, and I'll also give an opportunity for Emmanuel and others on the call to chime in, about how to do a good session proposal or is that session proposals should be an opportunity for mentoring. That is to say, we encourage people at the junior and senior levels of their careers to work together in terms of proposing a panel or an event. And in that way, there's an opportunity to think about exchange of ideas, sharing strategies about presentations, and learning about best practices, both those that are longstanding and new and emerging. Emmanuel, is there anything I should uh, throw in? I, th I think that broadly covers it, uh, Jackie. Um, I wanted to, uh, though, take this opportunity because uh, what Jackie just reviewed, I think, might encourage uh, questions from you. And I just wanted to remind you uh, to uh, be sure to submit uh, questions to this uh, Hangout. And in a moment, we're going to post the little a uh, trio of addresses for, so that you can uh, actually uh, submit a question uh, to us. Uh, Emmanuel, may I also interrupt and underline yeah. something Jackie said. Uh, putting that panel together, you know, that's again another great way for networking. I mean, I think a lot of us got our start by saying, hey, you know, I'm a German art historian. There isn't a panel for me. I got three people together. But then, you know, I contacted someone in the field that didn't know me who was a more senior scholar. And I said, would you mind responding? And she said, yes. And that's one way we met. And so that's another great way of, of building your communities. Right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, well, let's go on to uh, our next uh, topic. Um, and um, 
I guess it's time to approach the third circus, uh, uh, part of our circus, and that is the Book and Trade Fair. And uh, Lauren is going to uh, give you information on that. Um, before I talk about the Book and Trade Fair, I just wanted to mention that the app that I talked about before is not available yet on our website, so please check back in early February. And also the Art to Make catalog that Brian mentioned as part of uh, ArtSpace, that also will be available soon on the website. Um, the Book and Trade Fair has a wide variety of exhibitors, everything from academic presses to artists, materials manufacturers, booksellers, digital publications, magazines and journals, and visual arts programs. And many of these exhibitors sell their books, the artist materials, and other materials that they have right there on site. <clears throat> In addition, we have a couple of exhibitor sessions this year. Um, they are held um, where all the other sessions are held. Um, there's one called How to Get Published and How to Get Read. There's another given by Yale University Press and another one on arts materials education. Also, there are exhibitor events that are held directly in the Book and Trade Fair at various booths. Um, some of these events include author signings, product demonstrations, and book launches. Um, to get into the Book and Trade Fair, if you have already registered, your badge gets you in. If you're going to register on site, same thing, your badge will get you in. Um, you can also buy a ticket just for the Book and Trade Fair on site. Um, it's $15 for a member and $25 for a non member. I think that's about it. Okay, great. Thank you, Lauren. <clears throat> um, we have arrived at the question and answer portion of uh, our Hangout. And um, let's see if we have received any questions. I also want to take this opportunity to ask uh, any members of our little panel uh, to uh, make any observations or uh, themselves uh, post a question or two if they wish. We're all okay? All right. Okay. I, I would like to answer one question that usually is always asked, and that is, why should I attend the conference if I'm not looking for a job? I think all of what we've talked about today is the reason why. You can build your intellectual life. You can learn a lot of things. You can see a lot of great things. You can get help looking for your career. You can, even if you're not looking to the academic field, you can have people look at your work. There are all sorts of things that are there for the conference. It's a really, really rich um, place, um, very stimulating, and it's not just a job fair which is a common misconception. Um, I'd like to add uh, the kind of local perspective on that. Uh, certainly, uh, one reason to come to these fairs is obviously to to see local communities of artists. Uh, we in Chicago think that uh, there aren't just two coasts of art, and I think that while there are many, many other locations in which art takes place, uh, seeing that kind of diversity of art in different communities is really important. Uh, we have a thriving, uh, vibrant art scene. Uh, there's a great uh, permanent exhibition uh, that's been just uh, wonderfully uh, installed in the the National Museum of Mexican Fine Art. There's a very interesting show on art and archaeology at the Museum of Contemporary Art right now. And of course, there's always the, um, uh, the kind of encyclopedic collections of the Art Institute, uh, amongst many others. So just, just to tag a few, uh, one reason to come is just to really charge yourself up by seeing some new and uh, possibly very different art than you're used to. Mm. And Chicago is a great magnet for the uh, large central Midwestern region as well, where there are many institutions, obviously, of higher education and uh, many cultural institutions as well. And uh, as I said, uh, people from these places love to converge in Chicago because it is such a fantastic place to hold a conference. Um, I wanted to ask you all a question that has popped up in a couple of um, ways, uh, and that is, is there a dress code at the annual conference? <laughs> what would you say to that question? Everybody must wear bow ties. That's the only <laughs> thing I can say. And black. No. 
That's another common mis misperception. No, that's um, only in New York, though. <laughs> Actually, the actual answer is there is no dress code, but um, it seems to me that if you're interviewing for a job, you might want to pay some attention to uh, what you're wearing uh, when you attend uh, an interview or try to make contact <laughs> with uh, uh, some kind of uh, professional association. Any other? Laurel? I would say, I mean, <laughs> that you should, I would say you should be prepared to meet someone at almost any time. So um, you want to look, uh, you want to look professional. You don't have to be wearing a suit, but um, just, just be thoughtful about what you're wearing. I, I think that's, I, I mean, I'm interested that the question comes up. Uh, I, I think it's certainly, uh, you know, look, uh, conferences are social events where part of it is internal and part of it is external. I mean, we are also, uh, you know, we're here to present in many different guises of that word. Um, so I, th I agree with Laurel, I think being professional, uh, but that can mean di different things. I mean, it can be, Brian, the all black artist look, uh, which will be very popular in Wicker Park in Chicago, uh, or it can be the uptown bow tie wearing art historian look, which is actually popular <laughs> very much nowhere, but I wear it anyhow. Uh, so um, I, I really think that being, being professional and comfortable too. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I have seen some environments in which I'm thinking, oh, were sneakers the right choice for that interview wardrobe? Well, maybe not. You know, so. right. And you should be yourself. I mean, you know, like Paul is kind of alluding to, you know, like I can do the Boston prep thing. That's completely okay. You should be yourself. Just like Laurel said, be ready to meet somebody at any given occasion. You shouldn't look uncomfortable in that suit if you never wear one. Uh, a related question has come in. Um, what do I need to bring with me? I think I've heard a number of things uh, mentioned thus far, business cards, a computer. Um, anything else? Your, your uh, CVs, if you're interested or interested in participating in the um, uh, career fair. You know, I think also some syllabi. You know, even, even if you have a taught before, uh, bring in a model of here's a course description that I would like to teach. I think that's always a good thing to have around. Um, yeah. I would also add in um, whether you bring it outside or you make plans to buy something while you're at the hotel, you should have like snacks with you. Yeah. Because in between the sessions, sometimes there's not enough time to get eat. You don't eat. And then the end of the day comes and you realize, I didn't eat today. And then you go to the bar in the hotel and you know where that goes. <laughs> So some nuts, some crackers, something to keep in your bag with you at all times is definitely a survival skill of the conference. Right. Peanuts and water for me. Yeah, and water too. <laughs> um, there were a number of questions about uh, admission uh, to museums and the costs uh, of that. Um, if you want to attend the reception, uh, you do have to purchase a ticket there is no way to get into the reception free of charge. And uh, we're very, very, very grateful to the School of the Art Institute for supporting or providing sponsorship for this event, but it does not cover all the costs of the reception. So we are uh, uh, reluctantly uh, charging an admission, but for such an event, I think the admission charge is uh, very, very, low. Uh, also, if museums uh, do um, ask for a uh, admission charge, uh, yes, you will have to pay that. There is no coverage of this uh, charge at the uh, various uh, museums that are um, open in the area. Uh, some, I uh, think... That's that Emanuel. Uh, yeah. many, of the, many of the museums have free days. Uh, and so it's worth doing a little bit of research beforehand. We have the museum page? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, There's wait, wait, wait. Then you, uh, I'm being corrected here. Yeah, there are. there's a list on the website of museums that will allow you free admission with your conference badge. Oh, great. I believe it's the Museum of Contemporary Photography and the Art Institute of Chicago. Those are the two, um, yeah. But yeah, just go to the website and, and look for that. And also about the um, opening night reception, please remember that you can only buy a ticket on site 
at the Hilton Chicago in our registration area. You cannot buy a ticket at the Art Institute. Mm -hmm. So just be sure uh, to do it beforehand. Uh, just a footnote also local museums. Don't forget the university museums, if I may be so bold. Uh, the Smart at University of Chicago, Luna, Loyola, uh, DePaul's Art Museum, uh, Northwestern, The Block, University of I, University of Illinois, the 400 Gallery, uh, you know, the, of course, the School, the Art Institute, Columbia. You know, so these are all exciting spaces where you're going to see your peers and also more historical exhibitions. So there's lots and lots, and they're all free. So that's another thing. And they're all accessible from the L. I have a question here for Paul. First, uh, thank you for sharing news about the vibrant art scene in Chicago. Uh, the question is, is there a site where one might review the various galleries and museums? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, well, you could go to the, um, the this, this kind of standard uh, listing you'll find in um, either uh, Chicago Magazine on their online site. Uh, I think the Reader, the Chicago Reader, is an excellent. Um, it lists both for-profit, non-profit, as well as more public galleries. So that's either the Chicago Reader. Uh, you can get to them. Uh, let's see. Um, we don't. We we unfortunately lost the New Art Examiner. Although I believe Buzz Spector is offering up a session on the New Art Examiner, which is a great old Chicago. Um, uh, art magazine that um, that, that uh, has is no longer in existence, uh, but yeah, I would go to the Reader. That's my advice. Go to the Chicago Reader and look for listings of galleries and museums. Great, great. Well, and also, I, would, oh, I would suggest the uh, Chicago Gallery News dot com slash gallery site, which is in an online listing, much like uh, the sort of gallery guides that we see in other uh, major cities in New York, et cetera. So again, that's www.chicagogallerynews.com backslash galleries. And then two other great sites, I think, are um, which are in multiple cities uh, would be artnerd.com, art-nerd. Uh, there's one for New York, Seattle, so on and so forth. Um, and then a good local resource would be Bad at Sports, because I know they have listings on their website as well. You see, I need to learn something about Chicago myself. <laughs> um, there's a question here. Uh, which sessions and events sell out? Um, I don't think any sessions or events sell out, with a possible exception of the uh, reception at the Art Institute. Uh, that is limited uh, in terms of uh, attendance uh, capacity. So. Um, I'm sure there will be tickets available on the day of the uh, event. You can purchase them on Tuesday evening or Wednesday during the day. Um, and there is an uh, on-site uh, price, or is it just member and non-member? Member and non-member. But you do need a ticket to um, enter the uh, reception at the Art Institute of Chicago. They have limited us to a certain number of individuals. Uh, also, I might say that there are certain events in the career services area that uh, might sell out uh, as well. Some of the workshops, for example, might sell out. And uh, the tours, both tours are sold out. Oh, yeah, that's a very key thing. Uh, Chicago is a very, very popular city for architectural tours. Both of the tours that we have. Uh, uh, organized uh, through the Architectural Foundation have regrettably sold out. Um, but uh, in terms don't, of... You can find more about that. The Chicago Architect Architecture Foundation It's a wonderful resource, uh, very much connected with our affiliated society, Society of Architectural Historians. So it's a lot of good folks who are doing tours there. Uh, unfortunately, there are no river tours during February. So right. That's mm -hmm. right. uh, probably good. Uh, by the way, the Architectural Foundation is located on Michigan, South Michigan, sort of midway between the Hilton Hotel and the uh, Art Institute of Chicago. And it has a nice little bookstore and gift shop that you can attend uh, and uh, maybe see something you want to buy. Um, I just wanted to say something about sessions selling out, that actually can't happen because if you are registered for the conference, you can go to any session you like. Now, there's certainly sessions that will fill up and are standing room only, 
um, but there's no way to predict predict that. Um, also, all of the one and a half hour sessions are free and open to the public, so you can walk into any of those. Um, so they, yeah, they don't ever sell out. These are sessions uh, that last 90 minutes that occur breakfast, lunch, and dinner times. But you have to check the program because if they are affiliated, uh, sponsored, if they are, for example, business meetings sponsored by an affiliate, you may not be able to enter. So check the program uh, carefully. But there are a great many events and sessions that are offered by our affiliates, allied organizations, that are held in those shorter time slots that uh, are very, very uh, valuable, I think, as well as being very uh, interesting to attend. I know in that regard also that many of us uh, locally uh, are, are going to send our students to the uh, both the Distinguished Scholar event and the, dis and the Distinguished Artist Interviews events. Uh, those are open to the public and they're a great opportunity. They do fill up a lot of times, so that is, as, as Lauren was saying, a kind of standing room event. Uh, but those are really, really great opportunities, and we're really fortunate that the CAA allows the, the broader community uh, into those uh, particular uh, venues. Thanks for that, Paul. I uh, should have mentioned that myself. Well, and uh, in case you don't know, everything that occurs in art space is free and open to the public. Um, yeah. So you don't need a badge to go there. Um, the Distinguished Scholar Session, like Paul said, Distinguished Artist Interviews, what else is free? Convocation. Convocation, Convocation thank you. Convocation is free. Thank you. And orientation. Um, I have a very specific question about the conference app, if it's also available in Android form. And the answer is yes. Um, I have another question. Is there a CAA page where one might review available job opportunities before attending the conference? Uh, CAA has an online career center. Um, you don't have to be a member to just look at the jobs, is that correct? If you want a full detail, you have to be a member. Okay, but if you want to just browse, you don't have to be a member, but right, if you want full details and I believe to apply for a job, you do have to be a CAA member. Um, and the job listings will have a little icon that says if they're interviewing at the conference or not, so you'll know who will actually be there. Um, and in order to get into the interview hall, you do have to have a CAA member ID. You don't have to be registered for the conference, but you have to have your ID. Even if you're just going to the conference just to do this interview, you have to have your ID, and you can always get one printed uh, in the registration area. A question about career services. Is uh, career services only for members? The answer to that is yes with one exception. Uh, you can attend orientation, of course, on Tuesday evening free of charge, but you need to have a membership card to enter all the other career service events, uh, with the exception of the workshops, workshops, I guess, too, if you purchase special admission to that. But you do not have to have a conference registration. We do hope you will have a conference registration in addition to your membership card but to, answer, uh, to enter the array of career services offerings, you do need to show a membership uh, card. I have another question about uh, grants available to offset uh, tra travel. At this point, um, regrettably, it is too late to apply for any of our travel grant uh, programs. Uh, these are, regrettably, a little too limited for some of us, but it is still possible given your identity, uh, meaning your uh, location <laughs> in space, where you live and so on, to avail yourself in the future to some of these. And uh, please check our uh, uh, CAA.org, uh, our website and uh, our other publications about uh, these uh, possibilities. But at this point, regrettably, it is too late to uh, uh, for travel grants and other kinds of uh, uh, things that would allow you to save uh, money on travel. 
and Emmanuel, when are the is is it usually a kind of September schedule when people apply for those kinds of travel grants? I yeah, forgot. Usually the I know I forget every year. Usually the applications I think are posted in September and they're due in November. And I would say, oh, I would okay. say if you're a student or even a part-time faculty member at an institution, my institution has support for both part-time faculty and for students to come to conferences. Sometimes these things are not very well published. Ours doesn't do it. Talk to the chair of your department. They can steer you toward that. You will be surprised sometimes there will be support for attending professional conferences. Mm -hmm. We do have, um, although it's too late to apply for it, we do have a travel grant program for international scholars and artists and graduate students. And uh, while the amounts are small, uh, we try and distribute them as broadly as we possibly can to uh, enable people to, uh, to come. So uh, if you visit collegeart.org slash travel grants, you will be able to find out about this particular program. There is another way, too, that you can save money by going to the conference. Um, we do have paid volunteers. Um, unfortunately, we are all full with the volunteers for this year, but just for future reference, we normally post a call for volunteers in September, um, again with a deadline around December or so, um, and you would receive a complimentary conference registration, plus you would be paid um, by the hour. Um, so that is something to think about. We do require um, between eight and ten hours of work. Um, so just something to think about for the future. Should we wrap it up? Folks, uh, we've been here for a wonderful and instructive and entertaining hour. Um, before we say goodbye, do any of you want to make any final remarks? I would say regarding the conference, what should you bring question is to really bring your enthusiasm and your curiosity. I mean, the conference participants are the conference. It's not just a performance during which people are on stage. Um, it's a numerous opportunities for engagement and interaction, and it is your conference. So do bring yourself and your interest. <laughs> um, Paul, any last words? Laurel, any last words? Brian? I would just, just say try to enjoy it. It can be stressful, but it can also be very fun. So. Well, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you five times for uh, <laughs> your participation. And uh, thank all of you out there in, in uh, what? the uh, cyber world, world. for uh, joining us today and submitting your, your questions. And uh, we will certainly continue doing this in the uh, future. And uh, I look forward to seeing you, as we all do, at the annual conference in Chicago. <laughs>